All right, welcome to the Brawl Project. Today we're going to be doing a deck tech of Zakama Primable Calamity. And this is the deck that I played at Merchant's Brawl Hall 3 this past weekend. We recorded it. Not going to say anything about the results, but this deck is a lot of fun. Uh, it is, I call it 30 lands before time because it plays so many lands. Look at this. Oh shoot, my camera's in the way. Hold on, let me get, let me get this out of here and let me get this out of here. Okay, now you can see the lands better. So I'm basically playing any land that I think is going to be useful, and, and it's got 30 of them. One mistake I did make is that I only have one Plains and one Mountain, and there are a lot of cards that search for basic lands and play them. As this is a ramp deck, where our, our commander costs 9, it's Kama Primal Calamity, so I think I should have played an extra Plains and Mountain. But anyway, uh, Kama Primal Calamity costs 9, 9-9, nine, nine, Vigilance, Reach, Trample, Legendary Creature, Elgin, Elder, Dinosaur, I guess it's just those two. They don't say Legend there again, right? When you enter the, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, untap all lands you control. So, kind of costs 9 mana, but it's also kind of free, which is awesome. It has 3 abilities, you can gain 3 life, you can deal 3 damage to target creature, and you can destroy target artifact or enchantment. A lot of the times when you play as a combo, it's going to come with destroying a creature or... Um, it's going to come with destroying a problematic artifact or enchantment. And the best case scenario is your opponent's trying to play, I don't know, something like the, the Magic Mirror or something like that. Um, the Great Henge, one of those big artifacts from the new set. You play as a comma, and you just destroy three artifacts and enchantments the turn that you play it. Um, so, it costs a lot of mana. We need ways of making mana getting there before turn 9. And, well, there's a lot of lands, obviously. We don't want to ever miss our land drops because our commander costs 9. We have ways of playing additional lands on our turn. Dryad of the Elysian Grove is a nice uh, new one from uh, from Theros. And there's also the good old Wayward Swordtooth. I like both of those. Land or Scout doesn't quite say you get to play two lands, but it basically says that with the ability. A Relic Grazer lets you do it for the turn. And finally, we have Crucible of Worlds, which is a nice one. This one, some of your lands sacrifice for one reason or another. You've got Cryptic Caves, which can draw a card. Emergence Zone, you don't use too often, but it is an option that's good against control. But Fabled Passage and Evolving Wilds and uh, Lotus Field all put lands in the graveyard that work really well with, uh, with Crucible of Worlds. Um, okay, so we've got those. We've got a few ways of ramping. Um, Wolf Willow Haven is an aura that lets your land make additional mana. Arcane Signet I just think is too good to pass up. Uh, you've got ways of finding more lands from your deck. Nissa's Triumph, for example. <clears throat> Basically a draw two, even though those two are just lands. Nylee's Intervention is another new one from Theros that I liked a lot in this deck, especially since we have so many lands that do things. It works out really well. So you can pay it for X, and you can find Castle Garenbrig, which is kind of like two lands in one. It gets you to your commander a turn earlier, certainly. You can find Arch of Verazka so that you can, uh, in the late game, to draw additional cards or um, Memorial to Unity. Unfortunately, there's nothing that like really makes your stuff uncounterable. Emergent Zone kind of tries to do that, but it's it's a rough time. Anyway, I, I think Nylea's Intervention is a nice addition to this deck with the new set, and especially considering you've got some cards that let you play lands a little faster. Okay, so, you've got all this ramp. Oh, and, sorry, I should mention the two Ixalan artifacts, which transform into lands, which is another nice way of getting extra lands into play. Um, anyway, so you've got all this lands, these lands, what are you going to do with them? Well, first thing, you probably want to make your spells uncounterable, because if you're tapping 9 mana for your spell, you don't want it to be countered by a 2 mana spell. So Rhythm of the Wild is a big one. Uh, I would play Veil of Summer in this deck, but it was banned for the event, so I wasn't able to. Basically just relying on this. Um, how about uh, a draw five? Let's escape to the wilds. Doesn't that sound nice once you've made a lot of mana? Or the Immortal Sun, which shuts off opposing Planeswalkers. I think this one's a really good one, especially since this deck just doesn't play Planeswalkers. Uh, it plays Chandra, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't play many Planeswalkers. God Pharaoh statue, make your opponent's spells more expensive. And uh, Chandra is a nice one because it is a threat that is uncounterable. It's a big threat that is uncounterable. If you got a couple of Cavaliers, this one helps you stay alive most of the time. This one helps ramp you. And uh, of course you need to stay alive, so cards that sweep the board are pretty good. We've got Shadow of the Sky, Planar Cleansing is a really good one that uh, 
that this deck can use better than most white decks in standard, I think. Uh, Realm Cloak Giant and Awakening Sun's Avatar. That one's also a nice one because it destroys all nine Dino creatures, so you can play Zakama into Awakening Sun's Avatar and destroy usually most of your opponent's creatures. Um, yeah, so that's the deck. Tons of lands. You're trying to play all your lands as fast as possible. It does some really sweet stuff with all the mana you create. And uh, I, I I like big ramp decks. There's something just insanely sa satisfying about it. Um, so yeah, that's the deck tech. I played it this weekend at Merchant's Brawl Hall number three, which was Historic Brawl. And uh, I'll be playing a few games with this today on arenabrawl.net, so stay tuned. Ooh, Raft of Passion. Awesome. All right, let's get this going. Uh, Raft of Passion usually has a lot of counter spells. It takes advantage of um, playing at instant speed a lot. That's okay. One thing that people can't counter are lands, and we've got a lot of those. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to lead Temple of Triumph. If we have some way of accelerating us, um, Fire Cleansing is fine, but they're probably playing a control game and don't have a ton of threats. Like, it sweeps up Raph Compassion plus anything that he might play. Um, oh, jeez. Okay, so we're playing against wizards, I guess. That is what that implies to me. We don't have a forest, although once I get this forest down, that will count as a forest. So our plan is to go um, grow from the ashes into Cavalier of Thorns here. Oh shoot, I forgot to change my mana base. <laughs> oh well. Um, we've got double red, we've got double white, I think... I'm just gonna get planes. We have the Nylea's in Intervention, which is a nice way of fixing us. Uh, yeah, I think, I think I needed more fixing for the event. Alright, so our opponent's got three mana. Compass activation is not very scary for us. Okay, so that's what they're doing. We're just going to drop Cavalier of Thrones and be on our way to Zakama. If we can find anything that lets us play additional lands per turn, that's great, because that works so well with Nylea's invention, intervention. Ooh, God Pharaoh's statue, also not a bad one when you uh, are ramping. Slows your down opponent down so much. Ooh, okay, white source. By Star of Extinction. So we're gonna hit seven, but if we have a God Pharaoh statue in hand, we're definitely playing it. Our opponent has Raph Compassion up. It's a wizard. I guess that's the idea behind the sorcerer's wand here. Target player or planeswalker. Okay, I think we're fine. Play God Pharaoh statue. If it gets countered, that's fine. Zahid. Alright, this is, this is all okay. Play this. Play a Stomping Ground. Um, we could attack, but this can actually block. <clears throat> okay, so like this is kind of like Double Stone Rain, except even better. Which is pretty savage. <laughs> I guess they can still activate... Um, activated abilities without any penalty. But this doesn't number on most people. We've got seven lands in play, so on the next turn we can cast a big Nylea's Intervention, cast it for, you know, six or whatever, refuel our hand, and then uh, the following turn we can just play as a comma and start blowing up the ar artifacts. Evolving Wilds? Okay. Um, I'm actually going to have to discard a hand size, so this is a this is a reasonable opportunity to cast that, or to use that Evolving Wilds. I guess I could use it to deal damage to creatures with flying, but... That's not what we're about here. <laughs> All right, so arch. Uh, cryptic caves. Probably want Castle Garenbrig. Let's get a temple to scry and a command tower. Let's go ahead and play that temple now. Beanstalk giant. Not great, not terrible. I, I don't think it does anything novel for a deck. Like, it doesn't do anything that Zakama doesn't do, so I think we'll bottom it. Alright, so if our opponent wants to leave up counter magic, they have to leave up a lot of mana. Like, a lot. And we have, because of Cast Garenberg, we actually have access to playing Zakama both next turn and the following turn. Alright, this definitely looks like counter magic, but, um,. I mean, I could play Arch. I think if I was playing two lands a turn, I'd be more into, like, 
I, I'd be more into just waiting and just drawing cards with, oh, okay. Oh, geez, we get to untap everything? Like, I, there is some merit to just un, uh, using Archer Verazka. Okay, so let's destroy this. You can go ahead and tutor, that's fine. And I guess we can draw a card at the end of turn with Archer Verazka. I don't think that... No, 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 we can deal six damage to Zahid, that's way better. Okay, there we go. Found the line. And then on the following turn... Let's make sure... If... Yeah, I guess they can play Wrath this turn too, huh? That's fine, though. <clears throat> can also attack with Cavalier of Thorns. This also has Reach, worth noting. Looks like... I don't know, like, there's a reasonable chance that something like it might not have reach. Anyway, um... We got, we got, we played a 9-9, took down a couple of our opponent's permanents in that turn. Seems pretty good. Memory Lurker of the Wall. Alright, we can start casting artifacts if they can deal with Sakama. But like I said... Yeah, okay. I think we're good here. Play the compass. It's not bad. Yeah. So we're gonna shoot stuff down. I have cryptic caves in this list, but I'm not actually convinced that it's that good. Um, one issue with it is that, like, you're always trying to build up more mana to play Zakama and replay Zakama. So, eh, I'm not sure about it. Do we have anything that gives haste? No, we don't. So if they, like, sweep or something, we do get something back. I don't think that kind of intervention is too useful. Alright, there we go. Okay, there you have it. Get up to nine, play a really huge stat, and uh, watch the fireworks. Alright, looks like we got a Tezzeret deck. That's but that's usually really good news for us. Uh, considering that our commander takes those down, takes down artifacts. This hand is borderline. I mean, if we hit a... Like, we need two lands for this hand to be good. Grazer helps us get to higher amounts of land uh, faster, but... Yeah, I think I'm going to mulligan this. I would rather have a hand that looks like this. Okay. Keep. As crazy as that may seem. Play Probably playing Stomping Ground next. Spyglass. That is banned in this format. Um, alright, well, we got our work cut out for us, I, I suppose. I don't know that I actually have a way of dealing with that. Oh, uh, actually, that's not entirely true. I can go get an incredible amount of land and, uh... And, uh, just grind them out by activating the land a bunch. Use other means of... Getting ahead, this pool of worlds. Alright, so I can play like Lotus Field and then. I don't really want Lotus Field on this board though. I don't know, it does have Hex Fruit. Midnight Cross? Okay. Unfortunately, we didn't draw anything that lets us play additional lands uh, per turn. That's a really big one for this one, for this deck. Um. Yeah, I'm going to need the double red. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm going to say goodbye to Stomping Ground in Southern Pelagrove. So one of the ideas is that Cruc this is a sacrifice outlet for our land, so that Crucible of Worlds lets us get some value off of them. Oh, you're not impressed. 
Alright, well, we don't really have any artifacts, that's fine. So they can make this. Until. Wait a second. Until your next turn? Hold on a second. Hold on. We can't deal with artifacts! We can deal with creatures! Is this a giant? I think not. Alright, so. Uh, I don't really want to take two. We're going, our, our life total is under pressure because of Tezzeret. So let's just play Forest. And we'll... Realm of Giants. I suppose they can get it back. But like they have to spend loyalty on Tezzeret in order to do so. Okay, so our next turn we can play Dryad and play two lands, which is nice. Um, if we have another way to ramp, that would, that would make me even happier. That's unfortunate, but look, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna sweep my opponent's planeswalkers with Starve Extinction, I'd be pretty happy. Don't you play non-land permanent wrath? I do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Um, that is a very good card here. That's true. I mean, our opponent could have a counter spell. We're gonna have to hope that uh, we can get to our next turn. Play that dryad. Oh, no, no escape. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, they know about the star of extinction. They're going to get to draw a bunch of cards, but taking down a bunch of planeswalkers seems pretty good. Just tapped. Five, eight. I uh don't. No, I don't think I'm dead. Especially if they make one of these a creature, it's problematic. Oh, they get to... Okay, that is not a huge deal. That's also not the hugest deal. Uh, I get to draw a bunch of cards. Good help is easy to find in war. Right, so we're going to take five. Our opponent's going to draw four cards, but I'd rather have them draw those cards than, than have mana artifacts. Available. Shadow the sky. What just happened? Did I click through my turn? Oh, okay. Whoops. All right. <clears throat> All right. Fine. 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 All right, what do we have here? Well, this has one of the things I was hoping to do, which is Crucible of Worlds plus Lotus Field. So we'll keep. Um, we'll go ahead and just play the Sunfell Grove tap first. Temple. I guess this one comes into play tapped anyway, so it's a little better to play early on. Um, I don't think that helps. We're gonna have plenty of lands and graveyards with this Lotus Field Crucible. So I think we don't need this as Triumph. Search for Ascanta, that's a good one. Let's play Grazer. Play Lotus Field. Or sorry, Sun Pal Grove and let's play Lotus Field. Alright, so on the next turn we can either Crucible of Worlds or Beanstalk Giant. I think Beanstalk Giant is just better. One, two, three. Yeah, uh, because it actually gets us more mana on the next turn. Mortal Song's a pretty nice one also. So I kept it on top. Alright, they're probably getting they have their own artifact, no? No artifact ramp. Alright, well, Fertile Footsteps, let's go. Get a white source. Yeah, the colors are represented in our hand. <clears throat> Alright, so we have six mana. We can just jam the Immortal Sun. That's not bad. Um, alternatives... I don't know, like, playing Crucible of Worlds while you still have lands in hand, not necessarily the most insane thing. But our opponent also is holding up mana, so that makes me a little scared. So I'm going to go this, 
into no i think crucible is actually just more important like they can counter the immortal sun we're kind of okay with that if crucible lands and we're able to play lands from our graveyard yep you got it So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we get our ninth from the graveyard. Alright, they're on, they're really on the control mode, which actually lets me do this. So, we can play Arcane Signet and see if this resolves, then just play Archer Verasco. If we think that our opponent's playing Counter Magic, we just draw a card. Not missing land drops is pretty insane hack. Alright, so if our opponent's artifact deck is going to hold up mana each turn, I don't have the City's Blessing. <laughs> Why don't I have the City's Blessing? Well, it's because I sacrificed a bunch of things. That's pretty funny. I wonder why it paused there. Uh, 8, this will be 9. I wonder why it's giving me priority there. Yeah, we don't need definitely Clary on here. Okay. Pass. Alright. How close are they get getting to this? Hostage taker? Hostage taker on Crucible Worlds would have been real. That would be real. So, assuming we are able to get the City's Blessing on the next turn, which seems pretty likely. Um, our opponent's in a tough spot, like, either they can hold up counter magic and let us draw a card each turn, or they can try to make some sort of proactive play, which lets me play as a comma and start going to town on them. Five cards? Okay. Like, if I see open blue mana, or I guess open any mana here, it doesn't seem worth it to, um, to play as a comma into that. So there's the City's Blessing, let's go ahead and draw a card. We have a lot of ways of getting just like way ahead on mana, such as this one. I could play this for two on the next turn, but I'm just gonna play it for one this turn. I'm not gonna get greedy. Alright, You can also jam, you know, somewhat meaningless spells like Beanstalk Giant. Um, all right, they didn't name Arch. Well, that is a little worse. That's like not terrible. Because we still get an untap, like it's still a 9-9. Nine -nine still attacks for just an absolute ton. How much mana do I have? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So if I send 6 plus 9, no. I can play Beanstalk Giant and also Arch. That seems fine. I guess I should Arch first. See if I draw anything a little more useful. Nope. Serpent. Yeah, that doesn't seem great here. One downside of Lotus Field is it doesn't work too well with Sylvan Awakening. I'm already a little afraid that my opponent might have, like, um, 
Cry of the Carnarium, I guess, is the one that I'm really worried about. You generally don't play Sylvan Awakening unless you're planning on killing your opponent. Um, I guess with Zakama, like, if I tap everything for Zakama, get to untap all my lands. Alright, sure. Chandra's not a bad one. So I can just play Zakama and attack for 20. That's a lot. Um, I can also play Zakama and draw a card with Arch. I can draw two cards. No, I can't. Okay, so... Well, we're, we're playing Zakama this turn. Our opponent can't counter us. I don't think so. We're going to figure out how much mana we have, and we're going to play as a combo. So, one, two, three. Do I secretly have enough? No, I don't. I'm one short, which is unfortunate. But, that's how it is. I can't, yeah, like, I can Sylvan Awakening here, but I think it's better to just draw a card. Maybe land Chandra. Maybe land another threat if I have it. Cavalier of Dawn. Okay, well that, okay, that deal. <laughs> hey, what's up, Wilmerson? How's it going? We're playing against a Dirty Cheater. Uh, our opponent is playing Sorcerer's Spyglass in the deck. But we're about to get rid of that, and we're about to go to town with uh, Zakama. So, um, Brawl Hall 3 was recorded this past weekend, and this is the deck that I was playing, and I think it is sweet. Alright, let's get rid of that. Um, let's get rid of that Search for Azkanta, and let's get rid of that Midnight Claw. Alright. Cavalier of Dawn was a nice one. So I call this deck 30 lands before time because it plays 30 lands and its commander is a giant dinosaur. <laughs> All right. Ah, here we go. We got a Niv-Mizzet Reborn. I actually don't think that this deck is that bad against control. Like you've got some things that are really good against control decks. Yeah, we'll keep this. We've got the Wayward Sword Tooth. Council Iron Veil is going to come into play tap, but that's fine. Lands. Yeah, lands are good. Had a vision when Uru got spoiled that I should build him Brawl. Oh, I've I've built a I did a video on the Uro deck. I think it's I think it's pretty good. Look forward to a chance to play it uh when I get a shot. Omen of the Hunt? That's not bad, but I think we just wanna get this wayward sword tooth here. Oh, is our opponent countering us? No? Okay. Planeswalker deck? I mean, Planeswalker deck's good, but I think there are ways of dealing with it. Nice thing about Omen of the Hunt, also helps you get your, uh, City's Blessing. Yeah, check it out here on my YouTube. Alright, let's see what we got. So, can't quite get up to, oh, we're playing, we're playing Oko here too. Um, can't quite get up to the number of lands that I need. That's, you know, that's life. <clears throat> we are going to get a ton of mana. And, that can't be too disappointing. Oh, I can play two lands. Shoot, I'm still one short. Alright, well, I want to hunt's a nice one. Um, we can scry two with it also. Let me just play it, attack, cameo. I, I didn't see what the card they picked was. Probably some sort of counter spell. No they just got Oko. Okay, Alright. I'll attack Tamiyo down. 
wild and sovereign and free. I can also just, you know what? Their mana is like horrendous. They don't have any red source. Uh, they do have every other color, unfortunately. But I think, yeah. Well, let's see if they burn a removal spell here. <clears throat> Attack Tamiyo. Just let it happen. All right. Actually. <clears throat> Oh, um. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight mana. Okay. That is not what I meant to do. I accidentally double clicked. Holy cow! What a, what a, <laughs> what a mistake. Oh man, I meant to go get a white source and play planar cleansing. Take Oko off the board. Am I on mute right now? Oh, oh there's no visit. And lots of fun stuff, I'm sure. Just time wipe? That's all I can pick up? Alright. This was their red source, I see. Alright, how much mana do I have? If I draw an untapped land, I can play as a comma, kill Nivmizit, and then kill uh, Oko. That's not the case here, apparently. Um, puts that onto the battlefield taft. Jeez, that was a really huge mistake on my part. Um, all right, well, I'm just going to do this. Huh, none of these peel plays appeal to me in the slightest. Alright, I'm just gonna play your cleansing. I think I'm ahead if uh, we just sit like this. I certainly have more mana than my opponent, and that is a thing that I like. <laughs> Having more mana than the opponent. <laughs> Pretty good. Well, playing as a comma here isn't even that good. Alright. I'll just start making one ones. This really did not pan out for me. Like that misclick was huge. You got. <laughs> Hope we get something good. It's kind of tough for me to deal with. That's true. Lucky shot. Well, let's see what the wind blows in. Trying to attack down planeswalkers is like kind of a fool's errand. <laughs> I think I am losing this one. Alright, so I'm gonna replay it. I think they're just gonna have too much stuff for me to deal with. Like, I can play my commander and kill theirs, but they drew three cards off of theirs. Although a lot of these don't matter a ton. <clears throat> I guess they can just time wipe and sweep my board away. Instant two. 
Oh, that, that tickled. Oh, they're just just as interesting. I guess they want to do something else with the mana. Oh, come on. I just want to peek. The weight is killing me. Yeah, I think I'm losing to this control deck here. Well, I mean, that's a... That's a thing. Reach, indestructible, and haste. If I play it, it probably just gets countered. I think I'm supposed to do that though. Like playing the comet doesn't let me untap. It. Oh. Um, I don't think this is enough to kill them though. <laughs> okay, so space. They do tap, which is unfortunate. I think this dies also, which is kind of cool. Um, they don't have access to their sweeper, and not that they need it because all these are going away anyway. They have something that's like, exit all creatures. Yeah, that's a problem. These are indestructible, though. Hey, we took the Planeswalker off the board. It's worth something. Opponent's down to 13. Could be in some haste pressure. Although we lost Chandra, which would have been the easy way. Whoa! Whoa! I thought for sure we were goners. They don't stay creatures. All right, well, but another a different deck. This is a uh, Tashani, I believe. I think most of the playing that I get to do is certainly on the internet, where there is no multiplayer. All right, this hand seems fine. <clears throat> we're going first, sure. Let's play the forest first. Turn two, we get to play Arcane Signet. And then turn three, we get to play. Dry it and additional land immediately after. Enter the unknown. Exploring Narset's probably going to the good. Right. And an additional land? No. Okay. Nylea's Intervention. Wow, okay, so this is the combo. Dryad plus Nylea's Intervention. They do have a Field of Ruin, but that's still, it's still very powerful. Okay, so let's play this. It's generously telling us that they're not going to be... Oh, hey, cool. Tap for any color. Well, just in case this dies, I'm going to want to go get a red source. Oops, there we go. And uh, next turn we can... Nylea's Intervention? I think if we draw a card, we're playing Omen of the Hunt rather than Nylea's Intervention. Alright, so we've got, like, our opponent's also trying to do the Turbulent thing. I think we're probably going to be a little better than them at it. Fortunately. This. You know what? My opponent is tapped out. Let's just do this for five. Let's just draw five cards. Plus five, let's go. Okay, so we got our cast Garenbrig. That's good. I think that uh, we also want our... Um, let's get Fabled Passage, Arc, one, two. Uh, Memorial, three. Temple. You know, kind of into just getting Command Tower. This deck actually has a lot of uh, color requirements and command tower fixes a lot of them. So our opponent's going to be drawing a card here. They'll have access to five mana. We'll be able to play two lands at a turn though. And uh, Omen the Hunt also lets us you know, get another land into play. Ooh, killing Castle Garenbrig. 
All right. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> I already have the mountain in play, although I think I have a planes. Excellent. Ah, they get to draw a card from Tatiova when they do that. I see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, I mean, they have to leave up mana, right? Otherwise, if they tap out here, I just play Zakama and I shoot down all their creatures. Um, okay, and that's, that's pretty good. Oh, I'll give them that. Oh, they don't have a land. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's, uh, that seems, yeah, that seems pretty good for me. Alright, land, land, Zakama, untap everything. Ah, uh, they're going to unsummon with the trigger on the stack. Alright, fine. Like, unsummon is- oh, no, they're not going to. Okay, never mind. So, kill Tatiova, kill the Goose, and send for two, why not? Dive down? We've got an answer to dive down. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, no, no. You gotta... I, I guess, actually, unsummoning unsum Zakama doesn't do anything, because all my lands on top anyway. And I can cast something else on that turn. I don't know. It's still worth something, though, because I only have eight lands in play. Uh, I, I, I definitely like this spot here. <laughs> Daylight Ranger. Alright, exploring. Cool. Drawing up to two cards, and look at that! Just drawing them right off the top of the deck. Paradise Ruin. Okay, Hexproof one untapped. Oh right, I have Reach. What am I doing? I forgot about that, but I think we're okay. Alright, so let's play the Memorial. Let's play the temple. Ooh, another way to play more lands per turn. I actually don't think we need a second source of that. It's fine. Um, so let's do this. That also makes the scry like meaningless. I now realize. Alright, let's let's just attack with the comma. It's got vigilance reach. And we can draw a card with Arch. This card is so good for the deck. I mean, it fixes all the mana problems that you might have. And it uh, lets you deploy the lands from your hand. You are playing 30 lands in the deck, so you're going to have a ton of them in the hand. And you just get to deploy them quickly. Once you find uh, Crucible of Worlds, then, then you start to go nuts. Because you... Uh, <clears throat> then you get to just have an endless supply of them with your graveyard. Field of Ruin, Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage, etc. Alright, you got stuff. Alright, this time... This time I think I'll block. <laughs> Alright, let's draw a card. This interface is not good. The interface is not great with Sakama and Dryad, but it gets the job done. Alright. This time it's Tamio. I wonder if it's going to be the Tamio Petitioner's deck, because that's kind of a real deck. Alright, we got a compass. So we got kind of a good late game thing, but no way of, of ramping up, and we're not going first. I think if I was playing first, I might keep a hand like this. But on the draw, I, I definitely like ways of getting fast a little faster like land or scout kind of kind of qualifies all right we need lands i actually don't want this land maybe that's a little too greedy but like we have plenty of green mana we could use red mana i, I don't know i don't think i can pass it up all right fine so we got all right we got land or scout on the next turn Then we got two lands plus an omen of the hunt. If we can find one of the lands that sacrifice it, I think we're very, very happy, especially with the land or scout. <clears throat> um maybe ooh, ooh, like that. Um, <clears throat> I 
don't think there's any way of me... Yeah, okay. So, we're just going to play Omen of the Hunt this turn. Hop. Yeah, you got it. I'll just finish doing what I'm doing here. So, Landor Scout ended up being great. Um, Omen of the Hunt is going to find us a good source, I guess. Doesn't really matter, because we've got Fabled Passage plus Crucible of Worlds. So we can play Crucible of Worlds, and then we can basically play two lands per turn. One from the Graveyard with Fabled Passage, and then one from the Hand with Landor Scout. Oh, the Tamiyo. I am Tamiyo. It is an honor to meet you. Let me aid your research. You can just jam the Immortal Sun next turn. I think that's actually a little better, especially if we draw land. Oh, they found the Arcane Signet. Good for them. Uh, I guess I guess I'm trying to draw land, so I shouldn't activate here. There's no land. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So if I want to play the Immortal Sun, I just have to jam it. But you know what? This deck is all about playing as many lands as possible. So let's play Crucible for instead. Okay, there we go. I guess I should have fetched first, technically. Eh. Let's see, let's see. Play the Fable Passage, fetch. Again. <clears throat> now I'm left with, left with all forests in the deck. I could scry, or I could find two more lands. I think that's better. Just make sure I hit my land drops. <clears throat> Maybe this deck, some might say this deck is a bit greedy with how desperately it's trying to find lands. Oh, I guess I can, no, 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 scrying costs three. Can't do that. Sinister's Insight is in the graveyard. They've got Sinister Sabotage in the graveyard also. Search for Azkanta, all right. Uh, we're also missing a white source. Yeah, I, I think I need... Another white source for this. All right. The tracks of the Sinister sabotage, huh? Hey Zed Magic, Brawl Project's good. We had Brawl Hall 3 this past weekend, and I played this Zakama deck, which I think is super sweet. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Alright, so. I guess we can counter this. Yeah, not much I can really do about it. Let's play the Immortal Sun. It was gonna get swept up by Planar Cleansing anyway. If they do something that's like counter unless you pay 3, <laughs> I can actually pay 3. Sinister Sabotage, that's kind of what I expected. Cameo... Yeah, I can get back the Sinister Sabotage, but it has to give herself up. Um, but we're where we want to be, which is playing two lands a turn. We can get all the basic lands all of our deck with Fable Passage. Good game. Are they about to combo me? I know I noted this somewhere. They... Tired? Blood of Tears. Sure. Don't need that Deafening Clarion. Unfortunately, don't have the untapped land to replay the uh, Omen of the Hunt, but that's okay. Omniscience. I see. Well, that's pretty good. I will admit that uh, getting omniscience there is pretty good. So they're probably going to bring back Sinister Sabotage. Um, I guess I lead with the Crucible of Worlds. Hope they try to counter it and then play Planar Cleansing. Seek and find. All right, fair. Fun has a lot of stuff. Gotta give it to them for having stuff. 
they've got a counter spell, yeah, they win. If Panic Cleansing resolves, that's a little interesting. You can also try it with this first. On omniscience? Yeah, let's just do this. Alright, you got a spell pierce. Then I can play around it, but if anything else, then I gotta turn it one thing. Definitely looks like a counter spell. Oh, what? Okay. Well, alright, deal. <laughs> I'll accept that one. Um, okay. <laughs> Two on top? Well, that's not a good sign. Alright, well, we swept up a lot of our opponent's permanence. For not a lot of our permanence. And that's gotta be good in some way, shape, or form, right? Incubation Druid, you got it. Did I know about that? I don't think I knew about that. Alright, well, um. I'll run out of lands in my deck soon. Let's, let's, let's just do plan A. I mean, <laughs> why do why do a different plan when plan A works so well? You know? Let's get a tremendous amount of mana. Kill this Incubation Druid. Don't hate it, because uh, this game is about mana, but I can tap this. One, two, three. How much mana do I have? I've got five, nine. Okay, I think I'll play Cavalier of Dawn, just to cut down my opponent's mana. I can still play Omen of the Hunt. I can still flash in Temple of Temple of Abandon. Both those things are fine. Essence Capture, I see. So they had a creature counterspell, thinking that they were going to use that. Well, that's pretty good, making Incubation Druid big. All right. Go ahead. I'll just sit here. Like Eleven mana here. Let us have a storied battle worth retelling. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna put sinister the sabotage into their hand. Fine. Our future. We've got plenty of mana. This search for one of the last few, <laughs> one of the last few forests. That's this thing is only going to work one more time. All right, scry. Grazer is not good here. We've already got that type of effect. Oh, escape into the wilds. Well, that seems great. Um, there is no chance that it's resolving, right? So let's play Zakama first. Um, just make sure that we're on full control mode. I guess I should Fable Passage first. Look for the, uh, land. Alright, so, full, full control. Let's jam the Zakama. Auto pay. It doesn't matter how much, how it pays the mana so much. But what we care about is being able to untap things. Okay, yeah. Sinister Sabotage, you got it. Uh, we're going back to the main room. Alright. Oh, jeez. They didn't want to... They didn't want a Hydra? That is surprising. Alright, now we're going to escape to the wilds. Go ahead and draw five cards. Oh, do they have another counter spell? Oops. Copy. Oh, jeez. That's pretty good. I only get one turn with it. That's pretty good. Okay. Stainful Stroke, Midnight Clock. Okay, well, fortunately, none of these really matter that much. They're just going to be able to plus Tameo and then get the uh, card back. Yeah, let's just attack. I think that's better than getting, you know, this land that I can play next turn into play. Real grazer. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's a blocker for Tameo. Well, actually, they won't be able to. to the library. I guess they're going to try to get Jace here. 
thinking maybe I should stop on my upkeep to try to scry with Omen of the Hunt and try to find something a little more useful. Kid plays a comma and just try to shoot these two down. You know, they've got Disdainful Stroke, so that doesn't seem like that's worth anything. Alright, so we're not casting one of our big spells into this Disdainful Stroke that goes away at the end of the next turn. We got it. That doesn't actually hit any of our cards. Surely right now. must be famished. All right. So let's cry. See what we get. Field of Rune, Lotus Field. I don't think either of those help. Well, here's the thing. Lotus Field. Let's us sacrifice two temples and get a couple more scries, but doesn't really help us in this situation. Like we get to scry two as opposed to, I think I'm just gonna bottom it. All right, well, I'll kick this. That's fine. Um, oh, wait. Kicking it doesn't do anything. This literally doesn't do anything because we, uh, <laughs> we don't have any basic lands left. All right, well, let's see if our opponent bites. There's no way they're biting. How much mana do I have? So, 6, 11. This costs 11. Wait a second, what happened to that Disdainful Stroke? Oh, they lose it because it's the end of the turn. Oh, okay. Well, that makes things really easy. I'm just going to play Escape to the Wilds. Let's draw a bunch of cards. Right? Or wait, wait, wait. What am I talking about? Let's play Zakama. Um, let's play Land, then play Zakama. Was it your last coward a counterspell? I wish I knew the answer to that because uh, I could use some mythic wild cards myself. All right, resolves, untap everything. Oh, do we have something? Do we have some sort of removal? Bounce spells don't work too well on Zakama. Unsummon the incubation druid. All right, that's, uh, that's fine. I suppose, let's resolve this. Let's untap all of our lands, and then let's escape. Yeah, I think Zed might have the uh, line as far as getting Mythic Wild cards, because I'm also out. Like... <laughs> I, I don't enjoy playing Limited on Magic Arena. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that Magic Arena kind of ruined Limited for me. Um, I just don't enjoy it that much. Yeah, yeah, but if you just keep on jamming those, then that's probably one of the better ways of getting uh, wild cards. I've pulled out the credit card occasionally. Not proud of it, but it's something that I have done. Ooh, we have Cryptico Caves Crucible of Worlds. That's cool. Um, let's play Cabin of Thorns. <clears throat> Alright, let's see what land we get off of this. Evolving Wilds? Okay, that doesn't do anything. But we can pretend. Godfro's statue. And Fable, uh, sorry, Trigger Map. Well, I'm not proud of the amount. All right, there we go. So our opponent got Omniscience into play, played a bunch of things, swept our board up, put it, put it into our hand. And then we, uh, then we Planar Cleansed, it resolved. And then we, uh, just played a bunch of lands and then used that for Zakama and got to do cool things. So, if that, 
<laughs> I hope I've shown how much I enjoy this deck. It just is a total blast to play. Um, there's something super satisfying about making a million mana and funneling it into uh, funneling it into a really expensive commander, tapping your lands for an effect, untapping them for more effects, and, and yeah, it's just it's just a blast. Uh, I would welcome readily welcome more opportunities to play um, Historic Brawl just because I get to play this deck more. I think most of the chances I've had to play Historic Brawl, I've played this deck. It's just so much fun. All right, uh, thanks for watching the Brawl Project. If you're watching on YouTube, you can catch me live at twitch.tv slash Sunnyvale, Mondays through Thursdays at noon. And uh, until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.